Um, today we're going to be talking about the title, the theme of today is The Sound of Delivery. Can you guys say The Sound of Delivery? Say it like a big sound. The Sound of Delivery. The Sound of Delivery. Wow, isn't that amazing? There's a sound. That, um, last night it was actually like two o'clock in the morning but anyways it was like in the morning I'm praying um, before the Lord and he gives me an imagery that I didn't have in my notes but an imagery of a baby you know the delivery is over when you hear the sound of the baby what is it like wah! like the doctors want to hear that their lungs like opened up like oh my god they're crying beautiful sign the sound of delivery so that imagery of having that baby come out of you and hearing the sound, you feel like that concept of it is finished. There's a sound that determines that the delivery has happened. Or when you're waiting for a package, <laughs> right? And you get the notification. Some, if your phone is on, it probably vibrates. I don't know if that happens. But the sound nowadays is the notification. Who likes that sound? My package has arrived. I don't like when it says it's like shipping, like on its way. No, no. I'm like, man, sometimes I get confused. Like, oh, and Brian's like, no, it's not there yet. It's still on its way. Um, but that sound of delivery, when it's in the door and you open it and you see that box, I'm not alone. Mothers, I am not alone or fathers too. Man, I love that sound of delivery. <laughs> well, the main idea for today is that God hears the silent prayer and will send the delivery your way. God hears what? The silent prayer. And today we're going to be talking about a woman named Hannah. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. If you have your Bible, amen. If you don't have it, perhaps the screen behind me will read. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. We read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord, in the Lord my horn, do not miss any of these words, is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. I'm going to read it two more times so that we can grab all of the words. Then Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. One more time, in case somebody missed it. <laughs> then Hannah prayed. Can somebody say, Hannah prayed? And said, she says, my heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies. For I delight in your deliverance. Thank you, God, for this word. Let every ear be opened and let every heart be opened to hear the sound of your delivery. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We see a woman here in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1, who is pretty happy. She is shouting for joy. But in reality, this wasn't Hannah's condition before. Hannah was praising God out loud because she came from a time of distress that was internal. Hannah just came out of a stage that we, well, I would like to call as a therapist, depression. Hannah was very depressed. When if we see 1 Samuel chapter 1, we're going to read of a woman, the same woman, who was under an oppression. She was under a, a situation that caused her to feel very distressed. She had a provoker. Can you guys say with me, provoker? You see, the situation with Hannah is that she was barren. Barren means the inability to give birth, the inability to bear a son or a daughter, the inability to bear a child in her physical body, a womb. So she was given the diagnosis of barren, and she had a provoker. She had a provoker named Panina, and both Hannah and Panina had a husband. They both shared a husband. Listen, I'm, I'm preaching that, but I'm not saying that that's okay. That was the culture. Please, it's one wife and one husband. But in, amen. Glory. 
But in this case, we see that there is a husband. We're going to see Elkanine. And there's, he has two wives, Hannah and Panina. What happened is that Panina was able to give her husband many children. So for society, she was looked at favorable. Oh, I'm giving my husband everything that the culture, society, his manhood, what was approved, she was giving it to him. But Hannah wasn't. Hannah is barren. She has an inability. However, her husband, the same husband that Perina had, loved Hannah more. He favored her more. That's very interesting. How is it that this man... This is Panina looking at, at Hannah. Why is it that he's giving her all the attention? Why is it that he's giving her more? Read First, first Samuel chapter 1. Why is it that there is favor on Hannah when she's physically incapable of giving him something that I can? What's up with her? And so the word of God says that Panina would provoke Hannah. To the point that Hannah came into a situation that she lost color, she lost her appetite, she became fatigued, she was distressed. Can somebody say distressed? You could lift up your hands, but who can relate to that? That in your world around you, there's so much pushback. Everybody's pointing at your inability rather than your abilities. We see Panina here looking at Hannah saying, hmm, there's, there's a light in her. There's something inside of her. There's this favor that I'm after. And I can't get, I can't, I'm giving my husband something that Hannah can't. But there's something about Hannah. And guess what? Her husband, Elkanine, knew that Hannah had something too. He's probably thinking to himself, man, she isn't able to give me kids. But I'm still like obsessed over her. There's something about this woman that isn't something external, but there's something happening with her internally. Guys, don't miss this. There is a glory. There is a favor in Hannah that everyone is after, even Panina. And the word of God says that she was her provoker to the point that Hannah became depressed, distressed, but today I want you guys to look at Hannah in an, a, a very interesting angle. Hannah didn't give in to Panina's external provoking. Because Hannah also knew that she had favor. Hannah also knew that there was something different about her. And so this is my point number one for today. Silence the voice of the oppressor. Today I want to give you guys three points on how to silence your oppressor. Say, I'm going to silence my oppressor today. I'm going to silence the oppressor. Number one, persist. Persist. Hannah persisted. Hannah, even though she was depressed, her depression did not enable her to be silent. Her depression lifted her up to go before the presence of God. Easily, Hannah could have been like, you're right, Panina. Whatever you're saying to me, the way you're bullying me is true. It's true what you're saying. You know what? I'm going to submit to that. You're right. I have inabilities. But instead... In first, in first Samuel chapter 2, in chapter 1, you never see Hannah talking back to Panina. You never see um, Hannah talking back to her husband. Even her husband would tell Hannah, Hannah, aren't I better to you than children? You know what her reply was? The word of God says she got up and she went to the temple. <laughs> she wasn't like, man, you know what, let me talk to you about something. I mean, maybe she did, but I'm going to go by what the text is showing me. There was no conversation. Hannah's conversation was the silent prayer of her heart. It was the silent prayer of her heart. She knew, listen, even though society and my family are not really paying attention to me, I know that God, my Lord, is hearing my heart. So number one, point number one, how to get ready? Persist. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9, it reads this. Let's read some scripture so you guys know I'm like serious. Once 
when they had finished eating and drinking in Shalom, I, I probably said that incorrect, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, so this is afterwards. So what I'm talking to you guys about in verse 9 is that she stood up. Before that, what was happening to, put, to Hannah was that she was being bullied. She was being provoked, right? But the word of God says that she stood up instead of talking back. She stood up. Now Eli the priest, so where did she go? She went to the temple and she found there a priest named Eli. Can somebody say Eli? The priest was sitting on the chair by the doorsteps of the Lord's house. So imagine a priest, he's seeing her. He's like, what's, you know, what's going on with Hannah today? And I could imagine that this was in Hannah's first visit to the temple. I'm pretty sure she had many occasions of visiting the house of the Lord. Because when you have a plead in your heart, when you know that your womb's supposed to be occupied with something, guess what? There's persistence. That was for somebody. Somebody needs to know today that I know that God is telling you today that you know that your womb needs to be occupied. There's something that needs to be occupied. And what happens is that when you have that feeling in you, nobody's going to, listen, woman, you know you're like that. When you put your mind on something, we're like, yo, we're going to go after that. And this is what's happening to Hannah. She's like, no, I'm going to go. And so Eli's looking at her like, I want to be funny. He's probably imagining, like, again, Hannah, otra vez. Wow, what, I wonder what's happening to her. Now, Eli the priest was sitting on the chair by the doorsteps of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. In her deep anguish, we already identified perhaps she was already in the state of depression. And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days, all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. We see here that Hannah has a silent prayer. Eli was seeing that. Number one, persist. Praying from her soul. Hannah responded in prayer. She didn't react. I want to give you guys a little tip. When somebody's provoking you, we don't react. We respond. Somebody needed to hear that, so put a note somewhere. I'm being provoked. I'm not going to react. Because when we react, that means that we're behaving accordingly to something that I haven't processed. Usually when we react, we get in trouble and we start fighting with the wrong demon. I'm just going to say how it came to me. <laughs> Listen, when you react, you act on impulse. Now, sometimes that's okay. If a bear is chasing you, please react. Don't fight the bear, though, but run. You know, like react. But responding means, hey, I'm being provoked assess the situation. Hannah was capable of doing that because she had the fear of the Lord, like Pastor Rosie was saying. There was, remember this, Panina was challenged by Hannah, not because what Hannah was able to produce externally, but something that Hannah found out about herself, that she was operating inside. Man, man, if you want to, <laughs> silence is a big communicator. Hannah responded in prayer. She didn't react. She didn't need to confront Panina. Panina could never give her what Hannah desired. Stop fighting that which could never give you what you really want. It's not the oppressor that we have to challenge, but rather allow the oppressor to push you forward to the house of the Lord, to make you be persistent to reach the heart of God. Number two, how do we silence the voice of the oppressor? Make a vow. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 11, what, put, what Hannah did was that she made a commitment. Let's read her commitment. Verse 11, and she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. Commit, church, commit your desired delivery to God. 
Commit your desired delivery to God. Let God's name be on that delivery. You know when you receive a delivery, there's a label and it says your name or whoever ordered it. Guess what? What you're looking for, that delivery you're desiring, take off your name. Can you close your eyes and visualize? You're removing your name from that package label and putting the name of Jehovah, the name of the Lord. That what I'm going to receive is not coming from me, but it's only coming from the Lord God. Hannah did that. Hannah was like, I want something, and God, this is what I want. But I want you to take my name off of it and put your name on it. I make a vow today, Lord, that what I'm asking for, I'm giving it to you. What I'm asking for, God, it has your name written all over it. I'm going to make a vow. How do we silence the oppressor? Number one, persist. Say persist. Number two, make a vow. You can say, make a vow. (laughs) And number three, know that you're favored. Have you ever seen somebody walk in a room and say, yo, they know they got it? Um, Listen, I'm probably talking about you, right? You know you got it. You know you got it when you got it. You walk into a room and you're like, I'm good, right? There's something about you. And people will probably comment, like, you're different today. (laughs) Zuhaili has told me that before, like, you you good today, right? I'm like, yeah, girl, you too, right? She's like, yeah. It's happened, right? It's something you notice. It's like an aroma. Guess what? Even though Hannah was in distress, she knew there was something about her that she was still able to say, you know what? I'm being challenged, but I know, I know the God I'm serving. I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to walk in like I know I'm favored. Like I know I got it. Like I know, I know who I serve. I know that I'm favored. Can somebody tell me to say today out loud, I know that I'm favored. Guess who else knew she was favored? Her husband knew she she was favored and her provoker. (laughs) Guess what? Your oppressor, they know you got it. But they're making you believe that you are in a, you're unable, you're incapable. The enemy knows. He can smell that when you're a threat. You're a threat. I don't know who gave us that visual one time. I'm pretty sure some of you know that. Like, listen, when you wake up in the morning and you step your foot, that sounds like Pastor Anthony said something because he likes the, the stomping of that. Like, yo, when your feet yo, stand on the ground of your bed, <laughs> you woke up. Guess what? The enemy say, oh, I'm favored. Oh, yeah, yesterday was a bad day. Today is a new day. I'm favored. Oh, yesterday they gave me that diagnosis. Today is a new day. Oh, my God, yesterday my son gave me a hard time. Today is a new day. Hey, baby, how you doing? You have a new mom today because what? We're favored. It's a new day. It's a new day. Know who is within you, woman and man. Panina, Elkanine, Eli, Hannah, all of them, they knew that there was something unique and favorable about Hannah. Favor is not apparent. Favor is not apparent. Favor is not apparent. You know there is favor in you when you keep pursuing that which your external limitations define as barren. Have you ever seen somebody, especially children or kids, like, no, mommy, like, I could do it. And you're like, I know you can't. You know, externally it's like you can't, but internally they have this bravery. They, like, know something that we don't know about them. Like, they think they're, like, giants and we're like, you're little. But they're like, no, I can do it, mom, right? And you're like, ooh, okay. There was something that Hannah was convinced about. There was something greater inside of her. When you pursue, when you pursue the favor of God, when you have the favor of God, you operate under it. I want to remind you, woman, that you are favored. Begin to operate like you know it. Begin to operate like you know it. Give God a hand offering because this is fire. The external noise will oppose, but the sound of God will always be stronger. His voice is always stronger against the opposition. Point number two, get ready for your delivery. How do we get ready for delivery? I'm not going to really talk about the steps of birthing. That's not what we're doing. (laughs) But how do we get prepared to deliver? Number one, release to receive. Release to receive. Not when I get it, God, I'll give it to you. Before I receive it, 
I already gave it to you. Before I get it, I receive it. I release it. Release to receive. Before it reached the womb, she appointed it. Hannah, when she was in the temple praying for Samuel to be pregnant, she said, if you give me that seed that wasn't in her womb yet, if you give it to me, I give it to you. Release to receive. Somebody say that out loud. Release to receive. She appointed it. She gave it its direction. Hannah dedicated Samuel before he was in her womb. Release to release to receive. Hannah made an agreement and believed the word released from Eli. When we read this chapter, it's all in this chapter, chapter 1. What happens is that the priest that was in the steps, he came inside. He was like, okay, she's praying. Let, let me see what's going on. He even said, yo, you drunk? Because the way you're, what are you, whatever you're doing is not normal. Because she didn't go to the temple and was like, in the name of Jesus, God with glory. Listen, I didn't even plan to sing. I, it's just natural. That's literally how I pray. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Look, she didn't go into the temple and was like, God, in the name of Jesus, I come before your presence. Eli, you're watching. God, oh, no. She was like, like doing some weird face stuff. Remember, our focus today is that God hears the silent prayer of the heart and he's going to deliver what you're praying for internally. It's not about the external sometimes, even though that's great. I love to worship like that. But sometimes there's these prayers that is like unspoken. It's just... It looks different. And Eli saw it. She made an agreement with Eli. She made an agreement because Eli then says, you know what? You're favored. Go. May the Lord grant you what you're praying for. And I release that word to you, mother. May the Lord grant you what you're praying for. May the Lord grant you what you're praying for. So much so that the depression left her. Let me tell you something. Hannah didn't become undepressed. When she was like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. I'm not depressed no more. I got what I wanted. Woohoo! Depression left me because I got it. You know what, what happened to her? Eli was like, get up. You got, you got. May the Lord grant you. She got up and it says she went to eat. It says she got color. You know what that's called? Faith. I'm seeing, I believe without seeing the evidence. She got up from that prayer room. She was like, I got it. I got it. I got it. Can somebody say, I got it. I got it. I don't know what you're praying for, but you got it. You got it. Something began to shift. Hannah was getting ready to receive her delivery. Something began to shift. So that's step number one. Three ways to get ready for your delivery. Number one, release to receive. Number two, location. Location. We're going to see Hannah here. She goes to the temple of the Lord to ask for what she wants. She knows that what she's asking for, nobody can give it to her but Jehovah Jireh. Only God can give it to her. I know there's a couple of women here, actually all of the women here, who have decided to come to the house of the Lord because you know that your petition, what you're waiting for, you're not going to get it anywhere else. Because he is the deliverer of that package that you are waiting for. He is the one that comes to say, delivery is me. <laughs> it's me. When you are about to deliver, you go to the location where they are expecting you to give birth. I mean, if you can. You know, sometimes it's like the car. It's like, oh my God, the water broke. It's like fast, right? But it, how about when you're receiving a package, right? One time there was an important package <laughs> I'm sorry, baby, just came to mind that he was like, yo, Jasmine, that's a package coming. You got to wait for it at home. And you can't leave because <laughs> it's important. And I'm like, oh, it's, they said it's coming to the house and it's going to be there at this time. And you got to, right? I'm going to read this again. So much, I'm sorry, when you are about to deliver, you go to the location where you are expecting to give birth. When you are waiting for a delivery, you wait in the place it was directed to go. I want to tell somebody, it's not that <laughs> my delivery is late or it got lost somewhere. You're probably at the wrong place. You're just probably at the wrong place because 
what God wants to give you, you're not going to find it anywhere else but in the presence of the Lord. Where you located? Where you located? Give it to the Lord. Go and wait for the delivery in the place it was instructed to arrive. If you are waiting for something from God, you wait in the presence of God. When you're waiting for something from God, you don't wait anywhere else. You wait in his presence. John 4.20, Jesus tells the Samaritan, worship me in spirit and in truth. Because she's like, listen, we're supposed to worship here. He's like, listen, there's going to be a day that you're not going to have to worship any, in any of those places. <laughs> I'm seeking for worshipers who would worship me in spirit and in truth. And this was Hannah. She knew what she wanted. It only came from God. And she would submit herself to the presence of God. And that's where she would wait in his presence. Number three. What will you do with what you are praying for? It is very important that when you're waiting for your delivery, you have a good idea what you're going to do with it. You have a good idea of your responsibility. We are responsible. In, the, in one of the videos, one of the, the mothers said it. It's a, resp sorry, it's a responsibility. This is a responsibility that I have. So the question I ask you today, what will you do with what you are praying for? What are you going to do with that? Hannah, what well, she said, I dedicated to God. But guess what? Eli, the priest, something I want to tell you is that he had sons too. And in the word of God, it communicates that his sons, even though they worked for the house of the, of the Lord, they weren't doing so well. They were sinners. And when God instructed them, they didn't consider really what the Lord was saying. And Eli, he knew it and he didn't steward it correctly. He didn't put order the way it needed to be put. He didn't place the direction of the Lord. He didn't press them like he should have. And guess what? For, moving forward in chapter 3 of Samuel, 1 Samuel, Samuel grows up. Actually, as a little boy, the Lord speaks to Samuel and says, hey, this house, this priesthood is going down. Samuel, fast forward, is the one that has to communicate to Eli, your family ain't right. So my question to you is, what are you going to do with the delivery? We're praying for this delivery. We're asking God for this delivery that he longs to deliver. But he asks you the question, will you steward it under my authority? Will you steward it to worship me? If I give this to you, will you give me glory? And today I want to tell you, mother, gather your children. Gather your children. It could be physically. It could be in your heart. It could be wherever you are. Gather them and give them to the Lord. Oh, somebody received the package. I'm telling somebody today that you received the package. And now you're looking at it like, what am I supposed to do with you? I need instructions. God is telling you today, seal it with my presence. Direct it to me. Give it to me. Dedicate it to me. Bring it to my house. Bring it to my house. Dedicate it to me. That was the last step of what, how do you get ready? Already know in anticipation what you're going to do with that delivery. Ooh, I'm going to tell you this real quick, and then we're going to go to the final point of today, of this message. When God, when I transitioned from working at a clinic, a mental health family clinic, I transitioned out of there because I knew, like, I got to transition out. That's another day. But God told me, Jasmine, I'm going to give you the Oasis. The Oasis is my company. The Oasis Mental Health Counseling Services. He said, I'm going to give this to you, and you're going to do good. I'm like, oh, God, thanks. Appreciate it. You know, the favor. I walked, I got the favor. He's like, but. I'm like, oh, yes, Lord, I'm here. He goes, the moment you deny me in the process, I'm taking it from you. I said, what do you mean? There are people that are going to go to you, not because of you but because they want to encounter me. Some will know it and some will not. And in, in the front line, meaning in the first call before they're even your client, you have to communicate this. I'm a Christian therapist. I'm not a therapist who's a Christian. I am a Christian therapist. What does that mean? That yes, I'm trained. Yes, I understand the, the science of the psychology. But I do understand. 
understand that the authority that he's given to me is not mine. It is God's. And when people are coming to me, they want to have an encounter with God. And I'm like, yes, Lord. But Jasmine, the moment you forget that and the mo moment you try to take and twist that and make it about something else that is not about me, be careful. The sound of delivery is the last point of today, of this message. The sound of, the sound of, can you say that like you're waiting for something? The sound of, whoo, somebody's waiting for something. That was good. Number one, you will hear from the carrier. Somebody needs to hear that today. You will hear from the carrier. Eli told Hannah, go in peace. She heard from the, well, he wasn't the carrier, but he heard from the Lord, right? You will hear, I'm sorry, you will hear from the carrier. Eli told Hannah, go in peace. Hannah becomes pregnant over time. Don't miss that. If you read chapter one, it says, it, it wasn't like she left the temple and all of a sudden she was pregnant. She wasn't married, you know? It said over time, like she and her husband met up, like, what's up, you know? And it's over time she became pregnant. It wasn't like that night. Somebody needs to know that over time. But the carrier, which was Eli for her, God used him to say, I released this word. And guess what? She caught it. Over time, she becomes pregnant. Quickly, Zechariah and Elizabeth, who are John the Baptist's parents. If you didn't know John the Baptist had parents, he did. John the Baptist, cousin of Jesus Christ. Zechariah and Elizabeth, they heard from Gabriel, the angel of the Lord, Luke chapter 1, verses 5 to 25. Mary hears from the same angel, I would assume, because it's Gabriel, the same scene, the angel of the Lord, Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. You will hear from the carrier. The sound of delivery starts with the carrier says, there's a shipment. Woo you, oh, it's coming. And then you see, like, the route. <laughs> oh, it's driving five minutes away, right? One more stop. Okay. I think I've ordered too much. All right. So, <laughs> Zachariah and Elizabeth hear from Gabriel. Mary hears from Gabriel. The angel of the Lord comes and speaks on what they're going to carry. You will be pregnant. You will receive. Go. Go. You will. You will hear from the carrier. Point number two in the sound of delivery, a song of victory will spring out of you. A song of victory will spring out of you. Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55, Mary, the mother of Jesus, she sings a song. She sings a song after the delivery is communicated. Zechariah also sings a song. <laughs> In Luke chapter 1, verses 67 to 79, Zechariah is John the Baptist's father. First is Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And this is how we started today. We see that Hannah sings a song. Remember, we started the sermon today with Hannah praising God with a song. But in order to get there, you guys remember that Hannah was praying internally. And now all of a sudden she's saying, "Woo!" <laughs> she's pregnant. She's like, glory be the name of the Lord. There's a song that will spring out of you. Genesis 21, 6, Sarah rejoices. She laughs with the news that you will carry. And she's like, I'm very old, but I'm going to laugh anyway because God's promises are yes and amen. Woo. And the last point in the sound of delivery is it is finished. It is finished. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice, the deliverer. John chapter 19, verses 30. Jesus on the cross, he said, it is finished. It is done. I am the delivery you've been waiting for. I am the delivery this nation, this world is longing for. You don't have to be a mother to be waiting for something. You have to be just a humanity that knows that we've been longing for the ultimate delivery and Jesus says it is finished Hannah knew that her delivery cannot come from man but only could come from Jesus and Jesus says it is finished I am your completion Sarah knew in order for this to happen to me it has to be God and the angel of the Lord appeared Zachariah and Elizabeth they knew if this would happen for us it would only be Jesus Mary a virgin 
If I'm pregnant, it would only have to be the Holy Spirit to do this. Mother, your ability to give birth is supernatural. It is not your choice to have the body and the, the prep that you have. God enabled this design in you before he thought of you. You are capable. You are favored. There is none like you. And in Jesus' name, I release the, the anointing and the favor in your womb still. If you've given birth, if you haven't given birth, if you're barren, whatever the circumstance of your womb, the Lord releases the word in your life today saying, I'm opening the womb. I'm opening opening your womb. I'm opening your womb. Hannah's condition reflects the condition of humanity. God rescued her and her rescue came in form of a child. Our rescue today is Jesus. Call upon the name of the Lord. Woman, when you're distressed. Woman, when you see nothing is happening for you. Mother, when you see, man, my strength is weak. I don't know what to do. Call upon the name of the Lord and he will provide you the strength that you need. It's in God. Hannah being a person who is being redeemed, God interceded for her on her behalf. When she felt alone and abandoned, the oppressor was silenced by God. You see, I gave you strategies on how to silence the oppressor, but in reality, that authority only could come from God. And in reality, only God could silence the oppressor. Only God can silence your enemies. And today, your only task is to come before the presence of the Lord and say I give it to you I release it to receive it I release it to receive it <laughs> Isaiah 9 6 let's go there and then we're going to transition Woo we give God glory somebody just receives Woo. Isaiah 9 6 Oh, I love to hear the paper of the Bible. Ooh, let's read. Let's start in chapter verse two. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nations and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian, defeat you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, at the rod of the oppressor. Woo-wee. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be dis 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 destined for burning will be fuel for the fire and this is it verse 6 for us for to us a child is born <laughs> to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace of the greatest of the, his government and peace there will be no end and it continues and it continues this is Isaiah talking about Jesus Isaiah wasn't here when Jesus was born he was speaking about something that will happen as if it was happening for unto us a child is born don't miss this for unto us a child is born and this is Jesus your carrier, your carrier is Jesus. And this is the song that we will forever sing is holy, holy, holy. When we're in heaven, Revelation chapter 14 says that we will be in the heavens singing holy is the Lord because we've been delivered where there will be no more tears, no more pain. This is the idea, guys. Why are you fighting on this earth? Because there's a greater glory that anticipates for us. And that time is coming soon. But until then, the Lord wants to reveal delivery here on earth so that you can see his mighty hand you can see his mighty hand 
Put your hands together. God, you are faithful. This is not something of the Old or the New Testament. This truth of the sound of delivery is sounding even among us today. And today I want to introduce you to a live version of Hannah. No, we're not going to do a play of Hannah right now. <laughs> That'd be nice. Another day. I want to introduce you a Hannah that is among us, who speaks, who's lived and lives this testimony of the song of delivery. We can have our beautiful sister, Evelyn. I'm going to go you at. La Huerta de la Victoria. Give God a hand praise for our live version of Hannah. <laughs> That's, uh, I don't even know what to say. I feel like Jasmine Cover. I mean, just amazing. Um, I'm standing here, and I still can't believe I'm standing here, <laughs> to read what I wrote. Um, but, man, only God, only God can do what he does, right? So today I just want to take five more minutes of your time, and I promise that's it. And I apologize if I cry. <laughs> um, but I lived this. I lived this for seven years. So I know what Hannah was feeling. And I know what probably some of you are feeling who have been waiting for this delivery to come. And I just want to share a word of encouragement. But also some insight. I am here to tell you a little bit about my story. But most importantly, to reassure you. That your delivery is coming. About seven years ago, I was diagnosed with unexplained infertility. And in other words, doctors were not able to determine why I was not able to conceive. But God, I waited seven years, seven long years for my delivery. And yes, my journey was not easy. And the waiting was heavy. But I knew and believed God promises every day because I knew my delivery was coming. I'm here to tell you that I also had to silence the voice of the oppressor, just like Hannah did. I had to silence the voice of doctors giving me the wrong diagnosis. I have to silence the voice of society tell me I was getting old. And I had to silence the voice, the voice of cultural expectations telling me, are you ever going to become a mother? Just like Hannah, I was determined. I was persistent. I was not going to submit to a diagnosis, but yet seeks God's favor because I knew that my delivery was coming. During a morning of glory, an event hosted by the Spanish church, you haven't come, you better come. I heard the sound of my delivery. That was the moment that I knew that my perspective in the situation had to change. And that it was time to get ready for my delivery. My first step was understanding that my perspective in this situation had to change. That it was no longer about me, but about the miracle that God was going through do, to, to do through me. That I have to make room. I had to prepare. I had to redesign everything around me but most importantly that this delivery did not belong to me and that before it was implanted in me I had already released its ownership and stewardship to God that it was time for me to plan but also but also to fully surrender because I knew that my delivery was coming And finally, I want to say, I knew the sound of my delivery because I seek the voice of my carrier. I was able to block the voices. I was able to prepare for my delivery because I was in tune with the voice of God, with the voice of my carrier. The carrier that is never late and the one that knows it, that knows it all, that was not going to get lost. He was bringing my delivery. And today I stand here to tell you that seven years of prayer 
I walk in through the church today to celebrate Mother's Day with my one-year-old son. So my best advice for all of you that are waiting for a miracle, that are waiting for that delivery, is to tune into the voice of God because he is our carrier.